Welcome to Dubuque, Iowa, and today we're at Dubuque Ice Arena, home of the Dubuque Fighting Saints of the USHL. As this 33rd Stadium Review episode is now our fourth from the USHL on my quest to visit all 16 stadiums, and is brought to you in partnership with Pull Tab Sports. Check them out at PullTabSports.com for lots of content on Midwest sports and culture. Opening in 2010, the arena is in an extremely interesting location, as it's basically on this little island in the middle of the Mississippi River in between Iowa and Wisconsin. It was super cool coming in from the east in Wisconsin, going across the bridge that takes you to Dubuque. As I'm a geography nerd, so I always love the chance to cross the second longest river in the United States. There's actually a little marina right next to the stadium where a lot of boats are kept, but obviously not that many during the winter months. They also have a really cool Veterans Memorial Plaza, which was really nicely done and did a great job honoring all the branches of the armed services. The exterior of the stadium really wasn't that much, as it's just a large metal building with some bricks lining the interior. However, look at this sweet shot with the setting sun right behind the rink. That's awesome. The name of the arena itself was actually recently changed from Mystique Ice Center to Dubuque Ice Arena, which is why you see this blank sign here coming up to the stadium. And of course, keeping with my odd tradition, I'm wearing a flannel to the game of the colors of the home team to show my support. When you enter through those main stadium doors, you're initially on a ground floor lobby that's actually at the same elevation as the ice surface itself. They have a ticket booth here, as well as a brand new sign with the new name of the arena. To get to the actual concourse of the stadium itself, you have to go up this set of steps, which will take you to a 360 wraparound concourse on top of the seating bowl that goes around the whole stadium. What I really liked about this is that it's high enough up that you're not going to be blocked by any of the seats, so you can actually stand on the concourse if you want. And they have nice rails here to set any food or drinks you have. In that southeast corner of the rink where you initially walk in, there's this really interesting giant bobblehead turtle. I can't really find an explanation for what he is, but I assume that the turtle has something to do with the proximity to the Mississippi River. On the east side of the rink, you have all the concessions. And I could actually see into the video press box because of the door wide open. So I was like, hey, I'm definitely gonna take a video in here. I was a big fan of all the historic old time photos they had at the concourse of Dubuque, as they're not just all winter or hockey related, but several things highlighting the history of the city. On the north side of the arena, the concourse has these little private boxes that are kind of exposed to the concourse, but are kind of fenced off in a own little exclusive zone. And I assume this would be great for parties or company outings or something at the game. On the opposite side of the rink though, they had this really nice walkway here between all the private boxed in suites and the exterior wall of the stadium. As this was their Hall of Champions that honored all the alumni that went on to play in the NHL, as well as all the banners with the team's accomplishments throughout the years. As the Fighting Saints have won two Clark Cups in 2011 and 2013. They had a TV that was showing off all the Saints players that had ever played college hockey as they're just continuously scrolling through names. And if you don't know by now, I am a huge Columbus Blue Jackets fan, so I really love seeing the Johnny Gaudreau sign. Even though he only played with the Saints for one year, it seemed that he was a pretty big role there, and is still really honored and revered today. The South End Concourse is actually completely open where you can have a good view down to the ice. And just behind us is a really fancy bar with the name S. 4L, which I can only assume is Saints for Life. It's a pretty cool graphic here that they have for it. Just going through these doors, I felt like I was in the wrong place, but it was actually open to the public. And you can get a drink there, and there's large glass windows where you can look out over the ice itself. However, that standing area that I just mentioned is right in front of the way, and if there are people standing there, they'll be blocking your view down to the ice. While on the concourse, you know we have to check out some food. So we're going to continue on with the USHL tradition of ranking the hot dog. So we're gonna rate the price, presentation, bun, and meat all on a scale of one to five. And then from there, we're gonna tally up the totals and divide by two to get a final score out of 10. Starting out with the price, it was a $5 hot dog. Now for a USHL game, I think maybe about $3 would be appropriate. So $5 to me, that's gonna get two out of five. Up next is the presentation. And this really had me going because it's just a little paper tray. And to be honest, when I bought this, it was right before the national anthem was sung, and you can't just start shoving a hot dog in your face during the anthem. And I couldn't put it in my pocket because it wasn't in a foil wrapper, so I had to hold it in the little paper tray forever. And then I had to put the paper tray on the ground at one point. I'm like, this does not seem sanitary at all. I was not a big fan of the flimsy paper tray. 
one out of five. Now the bun itself, it was a bit cold and it seemed like it was one that just came out of the package. However, it was fluffy and not crumbly. Not too much to complain there. We're gonna go a solid three out of five. And then we get to the meat, the dog itself. And well, it's not a lot of good things to say here. This might've been the worst hot dog I've had. It was extremely salty. The dog itself was a little mushy, like it had been rolling around on a roller all day long. And I was not a fan of this one at all. I'm sorry to completely dish your hot dog Dubuque, but it's gonna get a one out of five here. And when you tally up the score and divide by two, we're gonna get a final score of three and a half out of 10. I'm sorry Dubuque, that's gonna put you at the bottom of the leaderboard. I was hoping they'd get some redemption with some other food. So I tried their pizza, hoping that it'd be good. Cause I mean, hey, this was kind of my meal for the day before headed back to Wisconsin. And the pizza was not good at all. They should probably reconsider some of their food options and their food providers because it's not the best to be completely honest. Once again, sorry for being so harsh, but I'm going to say things how they are. Let's get back to a positive note there here because every time I go to a game, I also collect a hockey puck from that team and they had a really nice game puck at the shop. And they had a lot of really cool merch and I'm a big fan of their jerseys, especially some of their retro ones, which look absolutely sweet. I was a little skeptical of this puck initially because it does have an advertisement on the back of it for a blacktop company, but I did see the puck up close during the game itself and it looks to have that same advertisement on the back. So it is the authentic game puck. The arena is laid out with the main seating in a horseshoe design as it fits a total capacity of 3,200 spectators. I kept my tradition of getting the cheapest seat in the building as I was on the shoot once side for Dubuque that only cost me $13 and was about $15 after fees. The stadium has one small press box that's kind of awkwardly sat on the concourse level, kind of closed in, right above both benches. Dubuque enters the ice through the tunnel in between the two benches, but the visiting team enters the ice on the far side of the arena, near where the blue line is, next to the penalty box, which is a really interesting location. And that's also right next to the Zamboni tunnel, which is also in a kind of awkward interesting location. The far side of the ring has private boxes that line the whole side, that has a few rows of seating in them, and access to this inside area that actually looks pretty nice with some cool lights and decorations. That south end has the bush balcony, or shall I say the bush balcony. However, it's not really the best view of the game because the flags and banners do block some of the view down to the ice. From the balcony, you can actually go down to the ice level itself, as it's a large open area there, as there are several kids playing around, but I checked out the area and I really loved how you could get right up to the glass and be up close to the game. And you don't have to have any special ticket to get here either, anyone can walk down there. And it's really interesting how the outside of the boards facing the crowd are this black shiny material. I've never actually really seen that in a hockey rink, so that was pretty interesting. There's a four-sided scoreboard that hangs above center ice, but the screen on it is extremely small and just goes across the top, while the main section of the scoreboard just displays the scores and penalties. And something that I really like about a lot of USHL rings is that since they're a lot smaller, the rafters are so much closer to the ice and it makes you feel like you're really closed into the barn. Due to the small sliver of a video board, there wasn't much in terms of a pre-game hype video that really built up the atmosphere. But I did realize later in the game that the horn they use is an actual horn in the south end of the arena. This seems to be a theme for all USHL teams in Iowa, but cowbells are a huge part of the fan culture here especially this guy that had a bunch on a stick. The game was very high paced and back and forth and a complete barn burner with lots of goals. I'm not sure if the scouts would be happy or upset about that, but there were a ton of scouts in attendance. I just hope they weren't there scouting for the goalies because they did not have their best night. During one of the intermissions, they did their chuck a puck. Something that I really loved was the old school classic Zamboni. I love how clean and simple that blue and white is. It's beautiful. During the intermissions, they did a lot of other promos and had a ton of free teachers here. It was really interesting that they had their staff walking around on the ice tossing them out instead of a mascot skating around doing it. I actually didn't see their mascot that they have called Bernie the St. Bernard, but what they did have was this big Dairy Queen blizzard. The team has a long tradition of playing Journey's Don't Stop Believin' before the start of the third period with everyone's phones out. 
The fans in the arena were pretty decent. It would have been nicer if they had a bigger crowd, but it was on a Sunday afternoon game, so I understand the smaller crowd size. But the ones that were there definitely made their voices heard. The Saints definitely battled all the way to the end, and I got a great view of that finishing push down at the glass at their shoot twice. But in the end, it just was not enough as they fell to the Muskegon Lumberjacks of a final score of 7-4. to four. But I still really love how the team showed their respects by thanking the crowd for coming out. And that's going to be it for me out here in Dubuque, Iowa. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see lots more scene reviews just like this one. Thanks. Bye.